is that we're transforming a school of 50 classrooms into a, a community of, a, of at least 100 learning spaces and that the children might come in in the morning and like a, an airport destination board discover where their classes are, like a flight destination, because the teachers have chosen the space for the lesson. Once that vision is, is being set or articulated, if I place myself in the middle, well then it's all about me, not about what we're actually trying to do. You know, any model that actually sets up you know, an organisational structure that's like that in a school will inevitably finish up with administration on the top and vision underneath. It, yeah, I've, I've got to keep this model working. Last year we, we visited lots of schools around the world and we, we targeted um, as many institutions like museums or the like. We just visited them bang 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 and then came back from there and that's influenced our thinking very heavily now. We, we enthuse the rest of the staff but on any given day now there are far more teachers with classes outside than inside than there used to be. So that whatever we've done we've actually unleashed the ability for the average teacher to recognise that there's a lot of great learning space outside of the classroom rather than inside and the kids are far more enjoying it because it's hands on, it's, it's, it's enjoyable, it's fun. It was downstairs in the Museum of Science in Paris. Just walked past it and I thought that's exactly what we want for a classroom. Beginnings and endings. I have thought a lot about beginnings and endings. Why do they look the same? It, the classroom environment changes within a lesson yes. numerous times. It's so, so dynamic. I mm. love it. And you can change on love the spot. It too because you know, it, no less, no two lessons are ever the same. They're always mm. expecting there to be something different. And even in the middle of a lesson, you can, the flexibility of this space is enormous. Well, I think historically, teachers have, if I've got something good, it's in my room. People know I'm a great teacher. Whereas when you take the walls down, you remove that need to hang on to your good stuff and you share your good stuff. I think that there's a culture of sharing. And our students have that same culture. It's not about who did the best documentary. It's about how can we collaboratively all come up with something better. I have an inherent belief that in that collaborative context, the collision of ideas will be the next generation of solutions. If you limit it to being the instructor, you're actually limiting the world of the kids to what your perception of the world is as opposed to getting the kids to, um, to ultimately drive the process themselves. One of the most exciting things that happened last year is kids came to me and said, we'd like to learn this way, so we've designed our own task. came and I said, we're going to design a game. I have Monopoly under one arm, Cluedo under the other. Packs of cards and we just spread it out and said, these are games, this is our content. We have to, the goal of this lesson is to design a game that's going to teach the people who play your game about this content. That's what I do. All, all teacher professional development is, is conducted as we want the teachers to teach the kids so that no longer do we have one person out the front of a staff conference you've actually got the staff immediately engaged in group work like we expect them to do with the kids. So we've actually, we've, we've had to, we've forced ourselves to go to the level of professional development, replicating the classroom behaviour, and that's actually been very important. We, we have um, learning opportunities for teachers every week where we can come up with our, um, take a lesson that exists and then make it um, uh, non-traditional. You know. um, another time we we wanted them to experience the concept of space, so we sent them in teams around Sydney to look at large public buildings with space and with education to then work out how did they reconsider the use of their own space. That we're allowed to make mistakes in the zone here. Lou, the bosses, have allowed us to uh, at times make mistakes. If you are fearful all the time as a teacher when you're working together, 
then it's just not going to work. But we learn from our mistakes, so we change things. We go, okay, there's plan A, let's go to plan B. And so that's what's really good in it, I think, and that's what makes it more comfortable and our relationship with each other more um, uh, endearing. So we've got this, this way of developing stuff internally that there's benefit that when other schools want to come, we've got people with expertise that spit it out to other schools. These teachers are encouraged to tweet and to blog and to share their practice with the community. Potentially they could have a worldwide audience. So they're speaking out of this school, their, their voices are not confined to within this school. From here, we can go to about 30 or 40 publishing projects where the kids are speaking by, by uh, publishing onto the internet. And look how many visitors they've had. 18,000 visitors. The day the day day. Day. And here, as we've empowered our teachers, we've developed our pedagogy, They've been bursting for the place to try it out in. The new places like this building and the zone, they just blossom. We have to, and we want to, and we need to. So we're covering it, we're just blurring the boundaries as to how we cover it and make it much more interesting.